Hello everybody. This course is called Models and Methods in Control Theory. Today it's the first lecture. We'll see introduction to LP and graphical method. In this course of Models and Methods in Control Theory, you'll learn various tools like linear programming, transportation models, assignment problems, integer programming, dynamic programming, and so on. Course prerequisites. You should be familiar with linear algebra and geometry and some basics of programming. If you have any questions, you may contact to the following email. Suggested books. No textbook is required, but you can download from the internet some of these books Mathematiski Metode i Modeli Uprableni Second is Operation Research and Introduction by Handy and Ataha This book Operation Research and Introduction is available in our library also and it has Russian version of that book So topics, we'll see some of the topics of this course because it's impossible to cover all the topics in this course as our credit for this course is limited. So in this semester, we'll see some topics like modeling with linear programming, Linear programming formulation, graphical, algebraic methods, simplex methods, diet problem, duality, transportation problem, assignment problem, integer linear programming, and dynamic programming. <clears throat> A brief history. So, linear programming method was first developed by a Russian mathematician, Leonid Kantorich, in 39. So he developed the earliest linear programming problems in 39 for use during World War II to plan expenditures and returns in order to reduce costs to the army and increase losses to the enemy. The method was kept secret until 47 when George Danzig published the simplex method and John von Neumann developed the theory of duality. After, the, after that war, many industries started to use those models and methods in their daily planning to control their work and benefit. benefits. That's why a new name is given for this course as Models and Methods in Control Theory. Linear Programming Formulation we try to formulate real-life problems as linear programming problems and at the same time we'll understand some terminologies in linear programming. We begin linear programming with an example. Example. Small manufacturing company makes two products of A and B. Let's see from this side. So here you can see company produces A and B products. To produce A product, one unit of A product, company needs to use one unit of resource R1 and three units of resource R2. After selling one unit of A product, it gets profit, company gets profit six dollars for each unit of A product. To produce B product, company needs one unit of R1 product and two units of R2 product and it gets five dollars profit for each cell of B product. 
so company has limitations it has maximum five units of r1 resource and 12 units of r2 resource now the question is how to increase our profit at the same time how to use efficiently our resources that we'll do in our course now okay first of all we have to convert this real life problem into mathematical mathematical form so let's call a product as x and b product as y now the first equation which we can write is the profit so here you can see six for each unit of a product after selling company gets six dollars profit so that means six multiply by x plus five multiply by y equal to z so our profit is z is equal to 6x plus 5y our company's aim is to maximize this profit now second equation or inequality is the, this one resources company again tries to use efficiently its resources now to produce a product it requires one unit unit of r1 resource and to produce b product company needs to use one unit of r1 resource so from here we can create another equation or inequality so x one multiplied by x that is equal to x x plus y is equal to 5 or less than 5 so this is the second inequality x plus y is less than or equal to 5 now second 3x using the same way we write another equation 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 12 this is the third one third inequality now the last thing the person cannot produce negative quantities of both x and y therefore x and y should be bigger than or equal to zero now we formulate these things maximize objective function that is what z is equal to 6x plus 5y subject to x plus y less than or equal to 5 3x plus 2y less than or equal to 12 x and y should be bigger than or equal to 0 this is now called mathematical form this is called formulating a linear programming problem now we use some terminologies in linear programming our x and y are called decision variables and function that function this one profit function is called objective function objective function constraints these are called constraints where it says it should not be more than 5 and it should not be more than 12 these are called constraints and last thing non-negativity restriction so here we restrict that x shouldn't be negative value and y shouldn't be negative value okay so four terms we introduced here 
decision variables, objective functions, constraints, and non-negativity restriction. So these are called mathematical form or formulating a linear programming problem. So let's solve that problem with graphical method. This is our first method in linear programming. So for that, I'll open paintbrush. Now, let's copy this given problem and paste it to here. Now, to solve this problem, I need x, y coordinates because here it is given x and y, two variables. Okay, let's draw x, y coordinates. This is y coordinate and this is x coordinate. I will write here y coordinate and x coordinate. Now, first line which I have to draw here is this one x plus y is less than or equal to 5. To draw a line, you recall from your school background, you studied algebra course at school. So, how to draw a line? Now, I cannot teach you from the beginning how to draw the line, but let's let's try to draw line. So here if you see we don't have coefficients in front of x and y, so we can directly draw uh, one line like this one for example. And from here you can see that x is equal to 5 when y is equal to 0 so x can be 5 only so I will write here 5 5 and here 5 y is 5 so this is the first line but here it is inequality so what does it mean inequality so we have to find that means feasible region for this inequality how to find feasible region okay this is a feasible region for our inequality it takes to this direction so what does it mean actually feasible region that means whatever you you take any point here from feasible region side in this direction if you take any point that will for sure satisfy this inequality or if you take any point out of this feasible region, like from here, it won't satisfy this inequality. That is the meaning of feasible region. Now, let's draw the second inequality. 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 12. Okay. If we take y as 0, so x is equal to will become 12 divided by 3 that is 4 4 is here somewhere somewhere here okay let me call this point 4 call this point 4 4 now, if x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 12 divided by 2, that is 6. 6 is somewhere here. Okay, let's call this point 6. 
and go here now draw a line through these points okay this is our second line for our second inequality but to say that this is inequality we have to draw a feasible region for that feasible region for our second inequality is this side this side is feasible region Okay. Now, the last thing, this x should be bigger than or equal to zero, is this side, the upper side, and y is equal to or bigger than zero is this side. Now, let's shade. shade this okay now we we have now feasible region feasible region which satisfies our problem if you take any points from inside this region that will satisfy both of these constraints not only one both of them will satisfy and the last one also says bigger than zero that's why we have taken this side not negative sides we did not take any point from the negative sides because of the last non-negativity restriction so we found our feasible region now how to solve our problem for that let's take any point inside from inside this feasible region let me take suppose this one let me take this point so this point is this is equal to 2 and let's say it's equal to 2 so if I take this point inside this feasible region that will satisfy both these constraints okay now how we can find our result that in such a way that it should be maximum to do that let me take the first point 2 as 2 and 2 so that is equal to 2 plus 5 multiplied by 2 so that's equal to what 12 10 22 so this is one kind of solution but it's not optimal solution but, but it satisfies our problem now in linear programming it says take the corner points of the feasible region so corner points the first one is this one second is this point and the last one is this one we don't need to take this corner because this is zero 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 will make our objective function as zero so our aim is to maximize not minimize so here we can take only these three points corner points and compare with this one we'll compare with this one so first firstly i have to find this point intersecting point that is called intersecting point okay this point 
what is this point how we find that point from your school recall again so x is equal to 5 minus y see this x is equal to 5 minus y second thing I'll put this thing this into the second inequality so that is 3 multiply 5 y plus 2 y is equal to 12 from here I can find y so y is equal to what y is equal to 3 if y is equal to 3 then from here you can find x x is equal to 2 okay we found this point okay let me show with this row I'll mention it here that this point is called this point is called 2 and 3 okay now we have three corner points of feasible region so this is called feasible region of our problem feasible region this red red region is called feasible region feasible region now we take three points as I told before three points of three corner points of feasible region first one second one and third one okay let's start from this one four so z is equal to six multiply by four plus five multiply by zero that's equal to 24 okay this is another solution for our problem so this is bigger than this so up to now we can say this is possible solution for our problem but not optimal because I have still two point two more points which I have to check it second let's take this point z is equal to 6 multiplied by 0 plus 5 multiplied by 5 that's equal to 25 okay one more better solution than the previous solutions so this is the possible solution for our problem but not optimal solution still this is not optimal because I have one more the last point which I have to check yet okay z is equal to the last point multiply by 2 plus 5 multiplied by 3 that's equal to 27 okay now this is my solution I can say that this is my now if you try you cannot find better solution than this one you take any points in the shaded area or feasible region take any points and put it here and then you cannot find better solution than this one this is our result so let me shade it this is my result optimal result okay now let's come back let's 
So we solved this. Here it explains how to solve. Okay, we did these things. And then it found four points and checked them. In the end, it says z is equal to 27 is the biggest. So this is the result. You can get $27 of profit. Now, we have a second way to solve it by drawing again. Now, let me explain the second method. Second method says, take and multiply the coefficients of the objective functions objective function so that's equal to what z is equal to 6 multiply the coefficient is 6 and the coefficient of y is 5 so that's equal to 30 now my another equ equation is equal to 6 x plus 5y equal to 30. Now I have to draw a line for this equation. Now that is this one. So from here you can find x is what and y is what. If y is 0, x is 5. That is this point. And if x is 0, y is equal to 6. That is this point. Now draw a line for that. Let's draw a line. This is the line for our equation. Now move this line to towards the feasible region. So if I move this line towards my feasible region, what happens? The first touching point will be this one only. This will be the, my first touching point on the boundary. So that will be my solution, the easy way. So this is the first touching point when I move to towards the feasible region. This will be my first touching point on the boundary. Not in the between, but on the boundary. That's so I, I can solve, I can say that this is optimal, easily. So when you find this point, you can put here and find 27. Or another way. If you start from this side also, that line, draw a line and start to go upwards to the boundary side, the last touching point will be this one only, this point. And that is your answer this is your optimal solution okay i hope you understood okay here it says the same thing so other situations of graphical method one is this one what happens if i change the science science of my problem in the in for my constraints if i change this this signs from the opposite side to the opposite side what happens let me copy this first of all copy and paste what happens if i change the change the signs so everything will be changed I can assure you ensure you that everything will be changed here okay let's open another new can ensure you that everything will be changed now let's start to draw again 
x and y coordinates this is y coordinate this is x coordinate now the first is in this way something like this and the second is this way now this is bigger than 5 means this side and this is bigger than 12 it is also this side now last thing and this also says bigger than 0 so our feasible region will be will be this site only this site will be our feasible feasible region now to find maximum profit in this site is impossible because it goes up to infinity it goes up to infinity so you cannot find the biggest solution for our problem so it goes up to infinity this kind of situation is, is called unboundness let me write it here unbound result is unbounded that's it that says here so we we have drawn these things and this is called unbounded now the second what what happens if the objective function is minimum and other things as same as previous example just we we have to change the objective function what happens if this is minimum so minimum point here we have to check three points one two three three is this one third one okay let me write again this is one solution this is second point and third so I have we have seen in the previous example that we have to check on the corners not all the points so I have taken three points now if you check these three points you can find that minimum is this one because from the second way of solution I told that if you draw a line for your objective function draw a line like this one okay draw a line for your function this is our function and if we move it into into the boundary so last touching point will be this one only so we knew that this is two and three this point is called two and three what is that two and three so minimum is here so here it says for find minimum so minimum will be 27 so you cannot find any solution which will be le less than this so take any points in the shaded area take any points and then put it here then you cannot find less than this value okay so this is the minimum so again i can say this this is optimal solution for the given problem okay let's continue now what i have said it it explains here now the third one third one so this is given problem is given now let's draw x y coordinates again x this is y coordinate and this is x coordinate okay now we know we know how to draw this this is just like this one so here it is five five and here it is five okay now second one 
if y is equal to 0, then x will be 2. 2 is somewhere here. So 2 is somewhere here. And if x is equal to 0, then y will be 4. So 4 is somewhere here. Now let's draw from here to here. Something like this. Okay. Now find the shaded part of feasible region. How we find? So first of all, find the feasible region for this inequality. That is the upper side. Upper side. It says this side is feasible for for our first inequality, and this second inequality says this side is the feasible region. Okay, from here you can see that, and last one says it should be bigger than x should be bigger than zero and y should be bigger than zero. That means we have to search in first quarter of x y coordinate. First, this is called in maths first quarter. So if we check in the first quarter our solution, we cannot find any solution here because here we are not able to get feasible region. We cannot say that this region is feasible or this region is feasible because if you take any point from here that won't satisfy our problem for this one. Suppose let's take 6 here. Take 6. Let's take point 6 here. Point 6. So if you take this 6 and put it in the second inequality so it won't satisfy so quick two x plus y so here two multiply by six plus y is 0 so this is not equal not. not equal to 4 ok 12 is bigger than 4 here it says it should be less than 4 or equal to so it won't satisfy if you take any point from here it won't satisfy the first inequality take 0 0 so 0 0 if you put 0 0 so 0 cannot be bigger than 5 okay so what we can say we conclude that this is called infeasible the problem called infeasible so for such problems solution is infeasible okay so what we have done it's drawn here so infeasible the linear program is called infeasible so limitations let's see the limitations okay what kind of limitations we can see in graphical method it's very difficult to draw lines if we have more decisions variables decision variables in our problem graphical method is very suitable for 2d phase only so we cannot use graphical method more than 3d phase okay suppose this one for example we have four decision variables so you cannot draw a, a line for this that's true further we can overcome those limitations by using algebraic method, which we'll see in the next lesson. Okay. Now homework. The first homework is minimize these things and you can draw a graphical, use 
practical method to solve this and maximize the sequences. Now, solve homework and show your steps by drawing them in paintbrush and find the results as I showed how to solve in this slide. Send your work to this email. Okay, thank you for listening. We'll continue in the next lesson.